So a pre-emergent herbicide is an herbicide that we use uh, really for weed prevention. So it's going to be different from a post-emergent herbicide, which is going to target weeds that have already germinated and emerged like the weeds that you see here. So typically we make pre-emergent herbicides uh, applications twice a year. Uh, in the spring and the fall for a lawn or a lawn type area and the reason for that is that tends to be the time of year that we get a lot of germination and emergence of annual weeds which are weeds that complete their life cycle in a single growing season and germinate each year from seed and so that pre-emergence herbicide is going to create a barrier in the soil to help stop that emergence from happening and help control some of those annual weeds that come up uh, in the summer and then the winter. Yeah, so um, that's also a really good question. So we can get kind of overwhelmed sometimes when we go to a big box store and we're looking at herbicide products. Um, so the first thing that I'll say is a lot of times when we go to a box store or a lawn and garden store, we may see that they don't use the word pre-emergent. So one of the first things that you're going to want to do is make sure that the product you're selecting is intended for use as a pre-emergent, but you may see terms like weed preventer or crabgrass preventer on that product instead of the term pre-emergent. Um, once we confirm that that product is intended for pre-emergent use, um, typically what I recommend for a homeowner is to use a granular product. We do tend to see that we get a little more uniform coverage of that product, uniform performance of that product uh, than we might with a liquid product. A granular product may be a little bit safer bet. This is a really great example of an area where we have a lot of weed diversity. Um, and we've got some weeds in here that are perennial weeds. And what we might see with those perennial weeds is that a pre-emergence herbicide may not offer us a lot of, it, of benefits there, right? And that's where we have to think about potentially a post-emergence herbicide uh, program. So for example, over here, we've got some Dallas grass. This is a very common weed pest in North Texas. And pre-emergence herbicides aren't going to offer us a lot of relief there. But we also have in here some spurge, okay? This is a summer annual broadleaf weed. Uh, we also have some dandelion in here. Dandelion behaves a lot of times like a perennial, but it can still spread a lot by seed. So we do get some benefit from applying a pre-emergence herbicide. Uh, we'll also get, uh, see a couple of uh, examples in here of some crabgrass. Uh, we've got yellow wood sorrel, some slender aster in here. You know, looking uh, late summer, as well as late winter, those are good times to look at the types of weeds that you have in your yard. They'll typically be mature, easier to identify, and it allows you to really think about, you know, what product is going to be appropriate next season uh, when you're trying to control those weeds again. And so, you know, take some time, get to know them. We will see that some uh, herbicide products are going to be more effective with grassy weeds or more effective with broadleaf weeds. So, we want to have a pretty good sense of the types of weeds we're seeing and whether or not that product is actually labeled to control those weeds. And if you ever need help with that, you know, a good resource would be to reach out to your local county extension agent. Yeah, so um, it's really important anytime we're using a pesticide product, whether it's a pre-emergent herbicide or a fungicide or an insecticide, that we not only ensure that that's the right product for the type of pest that we're controlling, that it's safe to use in our lawn or in our landscape, um, but that we're applying it at the right time. And so for us, a lot of times here in North Texas, we're going to make a fall pre-emergent application uh, when our uh, average soil temperature drops to around 70 degrees Fahrenheit for four or five consecutive days. Or we might look for average ambient temperatures around 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So very often for us in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we're, t we're looking at applying that fall pre-emergent around the third week of September, uh, but we may see um, if we have a particular year where it stays hotter, drier, longer, that it may be beneficial to wait a little bit. So it's good to kind of stay in touch uh, with what those temperatures are looking like. And then for a spring application, we're usually looking for our soil temperatures to warm up to around 55 degrees Fahrenheit or so for uh, four or five consecutive days. And for us, a lot of times that's gonna be in mid to late February, often around the third week of February. But again, it can vary from year to year. And the reason that we're basing that on soil temperatures is because we want that product to go out around the same time that uh, wheat seeds are germinating. And that's typically going to be based on soil temperatures and moisture.
exception. So our North Texas soils are particularly prone to runoff. So we want to be really judicious about the way that we apply pesticide products to keep that product from leaving our property and potentially entering our watershed and, and creating uh, contamination issues. So what I usually rec recommend to people is a few things. One, um, do make sure that you get your timing correct. Um, two, we want to avoid making pre-emergence herbicide applications when our soils are saturated. So if we've just had a lot of really, really heavy rainfall, we know that our soil is really full of water. That also means that it's going to be difficult for it to allow anything new to move in. Um, and so we want to wait until that soil's had a few days to dry out. We also want to avoid applying products when it's too dry. Uh, because then sometimes we'll see that our soils shrink and crack and this also affects the uniform application of our product. Um, so, you know, I would say look for a time period, maybe a couple days, three to five days after a pretty significant rainfall event or after a really good deep watering. Uh, and that's a good time to make your pre-emergent application. Um, make sure that when you apply that pro product that you read and follow the label really closely. Usually there will be very clear instructions about uh, how much to water in that product. Usually you're looking at applying about a quarter to a half inch of irrigation. Uh, and we do want to rely on irrigation to do that. We do not get the type of rainfall events here in North Texas that are really well suited for watering in a product. Uh, many of our rainfall events may be very heavy, unpredictable. We may get really significant amounts of rain in a short amount of time. And this increases the likelihood of contamination and runoff. So we don't want to rely on storm or rainfall events typically to water in products. We want to use irrigation where we can really control what's happening. We want to make sure that all of the product stays on the area where we're applying it. So if we get prills or granules uh, in the sidewalk or driveway areas on our property, we want to sweep them back onto the turf and onto our landscape areas uh, and just be really, really cautious about that. Okay, so last thing that I want to make sure I hit on is that herbicide products, pesticide products, pre-emergence herbicides, these are products that are typically uh, recommended for healthy, relatively healthy turf. So pre-emergent herbicides should really be applied to turf grass that we know is in relatively good condition. Um, this past year with our drought followed by some flooding events, we may see that some areas of our turf grass lawns are not as healthy as they normally are. And we just want to be really judicious about applying a pre-emergent or post-emergent herbicide to those areas until we really see that they're starting to recover. And that goes not only for our fall application, but also for our application next spring. Many of the products that we have available to us as homeowners are going to be potentially root inhibiting. And while a healthy, well-established lawn can tolerate that, uh, an area that's ex experienced some significant injury um, may not be able to tolerate it as well. And using those products on those areas may prevent that area from recovering properly.